Welcome to this evening's broadcast. My name is JoLynn Whitaker, and I want to be the first one to just call you blessed. Amen. And declare that you are highly favored. Glory to God, that you are chosen by the Lord, that you are beloved of the Lord. Amen. If nobody else told you on today, then let me go ahead and confirm it for you tonight. And like I always say, I've begun to say this quite frequently because I see it happening so uh, frequently in the lives of so many people, but I believe that you are here on purpose. I declare that this is a divine appointment for you. Amen. Don't let, don't let that become like a, a cliche thing for you. Amen. Don't let, don't let your heart become weary of hearing that because how many understand that in prophetic times of growth, that in prophetic seasons where the Lord is looking to accelerate you and promote you and to elevate you from your current position to where he needs you to be, amen, according to the plan that he has for your life, God will make sure that you are in the right place at the right time to get the word, to get the edification, amen. Come on, sometimes even to get the course correction or the strategic instruction instruction that you need to accelerate you into your blessing. Amen. Now the name of this program is it's your season. And I want to prophesy that over you right now in the mighty and forever matchless name of Jesus Christ. It is your season. It's your season for growth. It's your season for breakthrough. It is your season for the greater. Amen. Hallelujah. If 2020 was a year that put so many of us through the ringer, so to speak, if 2020 was a year in which you lost some things and you had to really press in and stir up your faith and stand on the word and uh, increase your faith like never before, well then let me prophesy this. 2021 is the year in which you will see your faith go to work for you. 2021 is the year in which you will see the Lord's favor come upon you. Amen. Because God always rewards those who diligently seek him. And so I do prophesy in the name of Jesus that it's your season. Amen. It's your time for breakthrough. It is your time for the greater. Now I have a very particular uh, and specific assignment on tonight. So if you are one who likes to take notes, please take two seconds, run and get a notebook, get your journal. If you're like me, you write in a journal and I do all the time. Amen. Grab your journal, grab a, a laptop or anything that you want to use to record tonight's word, I believe in my spirit. There's going to be a lot for you to take in and learn. However, as I like to say often, if you prefer to just absorb the word and just let the Holy Spirit minister to you, amen, this word will be available for the replay on my own platforms uh, in a few days. So you can certainly go to our YouTube or our Facebook page, Amen, Jolene Whitaker Ministries, and watch it again later on if you want to dissect it and take some notes. But without any further hesitation and with no further introduction, allow me to just pray very quickly. And then I want to make the most of our time together by getting right into the assignment God has given me on tonight. This is a prophetic assignment that is going to result in activation and breakthrough for many people that are present. I speak that over you now in the name of Jesus. So let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for every single life that is present, God. I thank you for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. I thank you that your hand is upon their life. I thank you that you are not finished in their life, O God, but that you will complete every good work that you have already begun. Father, I pray for the faith of your people to be increased. I pray for their capacity to be increased, that they may receive the greater. God, I give you and you alone all the glory for everything that is going to come about as a result of the preaching of this word and as a result of the prophetic utterance. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I thank you in advance. Amen. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Well, how many know the Lord said in Amos 3 and 7 that there's nothing that he does without first telling it through his prophets? I want to say this uh, very, very specifically. Many people listening to me right now, you're going to look back on tonight and you're going to remember getting this word. And then you will be able to connect the dots in your life 
and you will be able to say, yep, I got the word on that night uh, in, at the end of April. Amen. And now these are the things that are happening because after I got the word, then I did this and then that began to happen and that began to happen. And now I'm here. Amen. And so tonight is going to result. I prophesy this in acceleration for many of you. Amen. The Lord told me to tell you it's time to write your vision. It is time to write your vision. Let me just go, go right into it. What you are dreaming about, what you are believing God for the thing that he has spoken to you about, you know what it is. The, the dream that the Lord has put in your heart, the time has, I feel the anointing, good Lord, already this is so, so intense. The time has come, thank you, Jesus, the time has come for that vision, amen, to exit your mind, hallelujah. And you must do what the Bible calls, write your vision and make it plain. There is something that changes, don't miss this. There is something that changes regarding the manifestation and the culmination of God's plan for your life. There's something that changes in that process when it leaves your mind. And now you take the step and you write it down. You take the important step of committing the vision, committing the dream, committing the, the set of goals that you have toward reaching your destiny to paper to literally writing it down. And I want to go ahead and say this, amen. If God can't trust you to take that simple step, write it down, take the few moments that it's going to take or however long, who cares how long it takes. But if God can't see you do that, what makes him think that you're the man or you're the woman for the finished product to, to steward the blessing, to, to occupy the territory that your blessing, that your destiny would lead you into. No, God said, it's time for you to take that important step. And then on tonight, I'm going to show you from the word of God, what happens when you do that and why it is important for you to take this important step. Now I want to pause. There are some people listening right now. You are immediately thinking of something specific in your life. You are immediately thinking of a dream that you have in your heart, of a vision that you have for your future. Amen. You're immediately thinking about some goals that you've had and maybe some things that have been kicking around in your mind and you've been thinking about it, but you haven't quite made the progress that you were hoping to have made by now, or maybe you have not yet started or begun the process to get you into that position. But I came to tell you tonight that tonight you're going to begin your process. And so for those who are serious about this, I want to challenge you that when we are finished with tonight's broadcast, do not delay, do not tarry, do not procrastinate, do not put it off. Go and get a piece of paper, crack open your diary or your journal, or pull up a note on your smartphone and write your vision, make it plain. Now this is rooted in Habakkuk chapter two and verse two. It's a very uh, frequently quoted scripture, but we're going to really unpack it on tonight. But give me just a moment while I just read you chapter two and verse two of Habakkuk. And then we're going to reverse engineer it later on so we can really understand. But he says here in verse two, and the Lord answered me to the prophet Habakkuk and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets mm -hmm, that he may run that readeth it. And I'm quoting from the King James Bible. Amen. So it's very interesting to me, and you may find it interesting as well, that vision boards which are all the rage and all very popular among many people, even in the church. I remember vision boards actually originated in the Bible, in the word of God, writing down the vision, making it plain, utilizing clear terms. Amen. Hallelujah. And the reason the Lord tells us to do that, pay attention to the details now, is because it is a creative expression. You're taking what you see in your mind. You're, you're taking what the Lord placed in your heart and you are now expressing it creatively using the medium of, 
or the methodology of the written word. Amen. And then you're going to go one step further later on. You're going to, going to bring in the spoken word as well. Amen. And you're going to go ahead and speak what you want to see. But I want you to notice that the first step is to write it down, make it plain. It is your creative expression. Everybody say that creative expression. Now, why is that important? I'm glad you asked. The Bible shows us in so many different places, but we're going to look at Genesis 1 and 1, where it identifies our Heavenly Father as a creator. He is the creator. Amen. He created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1, 1. He created all of life that is on earth. Everything in the air, everything on the water, everything on land, every human being. He created all of life on earth and he created the planet itself and the heavens. He is a creator. And I want to go a little bit deeper. Bear with me and just journey with me on this thing here because we're, we have to go deep so that you can go higher into this thing. Remember that the goal on tonight with this prophetic word is to accelerate you to accelerate you into the manifestation of your vision, into the manifestation of God's promise for your life. Amen. That takes an activation. That's what we're doing. So let's look at Psalm 143 and verse 5. Psalm 143 and verse 5. You and I are going to take a moment and we are going to go deeper into the identity of God. And there's a reason for that. Amen. It's going to be a good reason. So stay with me. Psalm 143 verse 5. It says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your doings. I muse on the work of your hands. And this is the Psalm of David writing. And he's just going ahead. And he's further nailing it down that God is a creator. I muse it at the work of your hands. Everything you see in nature Everything you see in this world, even the things that man has so-called created. Well, we've created these things. You Watch this. Don't miss the detail. We've created everything that we've made, every piece of furniture, even cars, utilizing elements and materials that already existed on the earth. Amen. And so in that way, we could very realistically and truthfully say, Everything you see was made by God. And of course, we're not talking about wickedness and wicked behavior. No, that's, that's all under the devil's jurisdiction. You and I are talking about creative expression. The psalmist said, I muse on the work of your hands. Proverb 30 and verse 4. Listen to this. I love it. It says, who has ascended into heaven and descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has wrapped the waters in his garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? What is his son's name? Surely you know. And of course, surely you do know. That's the Lord. That's the Lord our God. And who is this son? That's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The one through whom you and I come into covenant relationship with the Lord. Why am I bringing all this up? Because that's how big God is. That's how big he is. He is a creator. But, but not only that, he's a powerful creator. We're talking about God harnessing uh, the wind in his fists and wrapping his garments with the water. And this is the, the, the size and the scope of the God who created you. And then here in Genesis 1 and 27, the Lord reveals that you are made in his image. That out of everything he made on this planet, out of all the other living things, only you, only human beings are made in his image. And as such, you are in possession of some very specific characteristics that run in the family, the family of God. Hallelujah. He's a creator. So are you. He spoke the world into existence. Hallelujah. So can you. Your words have power. Hallelujah. Proverb 18 and 21, James 3, 10, in your mouth uh, is the ability to speak death and life. Hallelujah. Creative expression. Creative expression. Talking about the size and scope of God, and I'm building something here because we're going somewhere. Psalm 50 and verse 11, it says, I know every bird of the mountains and everything that moves in the field is mine. He's a big God. When he creates, he creates in a big way. When he 
uh, speak something into existence it's a big deal hallelujah this is a big planet everything on the planet is absolutely stunning by design just like you are glory to god and so you have within you a very big creative ability i want to say this and and, and just receive it in the spirit to, in which the lord is instructing me to prophesy this over your life Sugar, you haven't even, you, you, you haven't seen all that you are capable of yet. You haven't, you don't even have a clue all that the Lord has put in you and all that he is able to pull out of you. I know you've done some things. I know you've achieved some things. And I know that I'm talking to some people. I feel the Holy Spirit on this. I know that I'm talking to some people that you have gotten a glimpse of your destiny. But the Lord sent me to tell you tonight, you haven't seen anything yet. God is stretching you right now. This word is designed to stretch you right now. He instructed me to just expound and to just praise him for his size, for his ability, for the scope of his existence, because that is the God who gave you creative ability like his. Hallelujah. You're made in his image. You may have done some things, you may have achieved some things, but I prophesy the season that you are getting ready to head into is going to just blow your mind. God is going to do things in your life and through your life that are bigger than you dreamed. Amen. And that's why your preparation is so important. But I digress, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen to Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 6. I love this verse. You alone are Lord. You alone are Lord. You have made the heavens, the heaven of heavens with all their host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to all of them and the heavenly host bows down before you. Hallelujah. So that's who God is. He's a big God. He does big things. Hallelujah. I declare that he wants to do big things in your life. I declare that God wants to do big things in the earth through your life. Hallelujah. I've said it before, but I need to prophesy it over you again. You are here for such a time as this. You are anointed for this generation. You are anointed for this nation. God is not finished in your life yet. There is still so much inside of you. And just, just a small part of my assignment on tonight is to just encourage you and to just set a prophetic spark to your faith. Amen. So that you erupt in the kind of manifestation that the Lord says you have access to in this season. So there's acceleration that's getting ready to come on some of you. Amen. And I believe that that, that, that that's you. I believe that there is going to be acceleration from where you are now to where God is leading you. And it begins with you, number one, understanding that your God is a creator. We meet the Lord in Genesis chapter one, verse one, where the spirit of the Lord is moving over the surface of the waters. And I came to remind you that God is always moving. He's never stopped moving. He is never, he does not sleep. He does not slumber. He does not ever stop moving. He's moving in your life. And he wants to take you to a higher ground. He wants to take you to a higher road. He wants to shift you and to lead you into the greater. Amen. But it begins for many of you with clarifying your vision, clarifying your vision, writing it down, making it plain. Glory to God. Some of you are listening right now and you're saying, this all sounds really good. And I have a lot of dreams for my life and I do have some goals for my life. But I don't know if I have a vision for my future. I want to remind you of something. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, the Bible says that you are God's workmanship. There it is again. Creative expression. You are God's creative expression. You are his workmanship. And then the Bible goes on to say there in Ephesians 2, that you were created in order to do things that he has ordained for you to do even before you were born. Do you know that there are assignments that are just for you? There are opportunities that are only for you. I can't have them. They don't belong to me. They weren't created or ordained for Jolyn Whitaker. No, they're yours. There are blessings. There is inheritance that is just for you. You are his workmanship created that you may walk in and receive all that God has ordained for your life. Hallelujah. 
Yes. So that, there it is. That is the, the size and the scope of your destiny of all that the Lord wants for your life. But how do you get a vision? That's awesome. That's, that's so good to know. Amen. We're talking about blessing. We're talking about the blessed life. We're talking about inheritance. We're talking about the things that the Lord has prepared for you. But how do you get a vision? How do you know what you're called to do next in this season? How can you know for sure where the Lord wants you to go, what he wants you to focus on? Now, there's a good question, because I know I'm talking to some of you. <laughs> some of you are, you, you're all, you're very comfortable with the fact that you, you are a creative individual. You're probably thinking in your head, this woman's not telling me anything I do not know. I appreciate the prophetic word and I receive it, but the prophet has not told me anything I don't know on tonight. I know I'm a very creative person. My, my problem is what some of you may be thinking. My problem is, where do I begin? There are many things that I have perceived the Lord tell me. There are many things that I know the Lord has placed in my heart. What should I focus on in this season? Once again, I'm very glad you asked. Amen. Glory to God. Let's begin by looking at Matthew 7 and 7. Go with me to Matthew 7 and 7. I'm going in the wrong direction. Amen. Iconic words of Jesus, which is why it's written in your Bible in red. And here Jesus says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. And then previously in Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, the Lord says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know us not. Can I prophesy over you? Tonight, once again, do not tarry, do not delay. Tonight, because this is a word on purpose for your life. I want to encourage you to go sit in your prayer chair. Go into your Jesus space. Go into your prayer closet and seek. Ask. Amen. Do you know that there are some things that will not be released to you unless you ask? That's a fact. Do you know that there are some things the Lord will not even reveal to you unless you take the initiative to knock, <laughs> amen, to seek glory to God. And there again, uh, in Hebrews 11 and six, the word clarifies that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, ask, seek, knock. I prophesy that I'm talking to some people that you are getting ready to knock. You are getting ready to ask. You are getting ready to seek. What is the Lord's will for you in this season of your life? What does God want you to focus on? What is he calling you to do, to receive, to, to have in this season? And I prophesy that because you will take the initiative to ask, to seek, to knock, that because you will take the initiative to call to him and ask him to show you great and mighty things, which you know is not, I prophesy that your reward is going to be that God is going to answer you. The Lord will answer you and you will know that you know with no confusion receive this because there is a prophetic anointing on this utterance. Good Lord. There is a, a powerful anointing on this. I prophesy that the Lord is going to confirm things to you. He's going to give you the answers and he's going to confirm to you and there will be no confusion. You say, but how will I be sure? Oh, you'll be sure. There's no confusion in God. First Corinthians 14, 33. So you're going to ask, you're going to seek, you're going to knock and you're going to keep at it and you're going to be persistent. I used to know somebody who said that the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So you're going to be like that squeaky wheel. Only you will not sound like a squeaky wheel to the Lord. Your seek, listen carefully, your seek will be as music to his ears because he wants you to. That's what he said there in Jeremiah 33 and three, seek call to me. I'll answer you. Amen. Hallelujah. And I prophesy that your seek and your knocking is going to be as music to the Lord's ears. I feel the anointing here to say that there are some of you that he's been waiting on you. He's been waiting for you to ask him, God, what would you have me to do next? This is what I think I heard, Lord. 
Am I correct in this? May I receive a confirmation? He's been waiting on you. And I want to say this again for clarity's sake. There are some things that God will not give you until you ask. There are some things that he will only release to you if you ask. You say, why? I'll tell you why. You're, and many of you are going to recognize the ring of truth the moment you hear these words. It takes a certain kind of person to take the initiative to seek. Not only just say this very gently, but very firmly as well. Many people, not you, I know this is not you, but many people, they're just hoping that things show up, that they don't have to do anything at all. But it takes a certain kind of person to begin to seek, to begin to ask, to actually hit their knees and seek the Lord, to actually go into their prayer chair or go into the prayer closet and, and, and press in and, and then go in the next day and then go in the next day because you are pressing in and you're not going to quit until you get your confirmation. You're not going to quit until you get your answer. Now that, that's somebody the Lord knows he can use. Why? You've already demonstrated that you have initiative. Mm -hmm. You've already demonstrated that you have persistence. Amen. And you've already demonstrated that you are not one who's just going to pursue what seems good to you. You are not going to just pursue uh, what seems right to you. You're not going to just be wise in your own eyes. You know you're smart. But there's one who is far more wise and far smarter. And he knows things that only, only a heavenly father can know. And so you need to consult Jesus. You're not going to make a move without consulting Jesus. You're not going to make that investment without consulting Jesus. You're not going to pop the question for that one, much less put a ring on it without consulting Jesus. You're not going to start that company without consulting Jesus. You're not going to make that geographical move. I feel like I'm calling out specific things. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm calling out specific things that many of you are praying about right now. You're not going to make the geographical move until you hear from God. You don't want you, you want him to order your steps. You don't want to just call your best shot and hope it works out. Okay, baby, you know, you've already done that too many times for some of you. And the result, the result for some is that you spend time, seasons, and maybe even years in the wrong relationships, at the wrong company, in the wrong place, investing into the wrong project, investing into the wrong person. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so this is a time and a season where you are to consult the Lord. Ask him. You say, okay, I want to write my vision. I want to make it plain. Amen. I'm in. I'm in. I'm, I'm, yes. I hear the Lord on this. I'm ready to write down my goals. I'm ready to write my dream. And now you say, and I'm also ready to consult the Lord. I want to get confirmation from God. Father, I know there is no confusion. Can you speak and confirm it to me? As a matter of fact, lift your hands. Let me pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just speak clarity. I pray that you give your people ears to hear, O oh God, and even eyes to see the signs and the confirmations that you are going to release on tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray wisdom over your people. You say in your word that if any lack wisdom, let them ask God. I'm asking you tonight on behalf of the people who have their arms outstretched to you, O oh God. They have their hands outstretched to you, Lord, for they are reaching to you for answers. They are reaching to you for direction. They are reaching to you, Lord, for confirmation. God, I thank you for the confirmation that's re being released even on tonight. I hear the Lord saying to watch your dreams tonight. God said, watch your dreams tonight. Watch the things that happen beginning even on tomorrow. For even within 24 hours, there are people listening. You're going to get your confirmation. And you will know that you know with no shadow of a doubt, that is what the Lord is calling me to do. That is what God wants me to do. And even though, watch me, even though it may not make sense to anybody, even though nobody I know may approve of it, even though nobody I know, they're going to think I'm, I'm losing it. I'm a little crazy. But you're going to know that it's God. And once you know that it's God, you're going to write your vision. You're going to make it plain. Amen. And then you're going to see acceleration come on that thing. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you know why some people have a hard time? Um, not you, but maybe some people you know. Do you know why some people have a hard time um, getting into agreement with the vision that the Lord gives you or the instruction he gives you? Do you know why? Because I don't have God-sized faith. We just learned how God is a creator and all the things that he's created are vast and magnificent. But if you're talking to somebody who is not firmly rooted in the word, I don't mean they used to be in the word. I mean, no, they're firmly rooted in the word. It's a, it's a daily thing. They got their own seek going on, if you know what I'm saying. They have a firm relationship with Jesus Christ. They too are chasing the destiny for their life and they haven't slowed down. So, so, so I'm not talking about those kind of people, but there are some people that they just, <clears throat> they're not tight with God the way you know God. And so when you begin talking about the Lord and the vision he gave you and the dream that he gave you and, and what you believe your destiny is, some people can't see it. And they're going to try to apply the wisdom of the world to the dream that God gave you. Oh, no, 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 no. God gives you God-sized dreams. He gives you God-sized vision. And it will seem like foolishness to people who are in the world. It will seem so crazy and just so far out there and so impractical and so unrealistic. And can I tell you something? It absolutely usually is. Absolutely. Because if it was practical and realistic, you could do it yourself. Why would you need God? <laughs> if it was something that was practical, you know, you're smart. You can do things. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if it was something practical and realistic, you could probably finagle that thing yourself. Then you wouldn't even need God then how is it a God-sized dream? How is it a God-sized vision? How are you on a God-sized mission? How are you going to bring forth God-sized destiny? No, <laughs> that's not the way it goes. The, the Lord Jesus Christ says, I'm going to need you to step out of the boat. Come stand right out here on this water. What? And that's when you start losing people. Because again, it's not realistic. Seems very unwise. Seems dangerous. But not to the Lord, not to the Lord who made the water, <laughs> not to the Lord who gathers the wind in his fist, not to the Lord whose very garments are the water, my God, not to the Lord who designed this planet and all of life on it. Amen. So he's challenging some people tonight to stop questioning the size of the vision that he gave you. As a matter of fact, one way you know that's a vision from the Lord is because it's huge. And you don't even know how you're going to do this. Exactly. You're not going to do it. It's the Lord. He'll put his super on your natural efforts. He will show up on the fertile ground of your obedience. And he will bring it to pass. And my friend, look right at me and don't miss this part. It's so key. And that's how he gets the glory. That's how he gets the glory. Can I say this? Would you agree that this world needs to see God do some things for which only, only he can get the glory. This world needs to see God show out. This world needs to see God do some incredible things. This world needs to see people of God. Oh, here we go. This world needs to see, can I say it? I'm going to say it. This wicked generation needs to see people of God who are anointed, full of the Holy Spirit, Clear about one fact. They are here for such a time as this. Clear about the fact that for the God they serve, the Lord Jesus Christ, there is nothing that is impossible because he was already crucified, laid to rest in a borrowed tomb, tomb and just pop right back up three days later. There is nothing that is impossible for the Lord you serve. Amen. In this wicked generation, this lost generation, Mm -hmm. This deceived generation. Now we're getting there. Deceived. Totally deceived by doctrines of demons. They don't know it's doctrines of demons, but you and I do. And those people need to see a child of God like you. Full of the Holy Spirit. Full of God-sized faith. Pursue 
the call of God that they know is on their life and begin to walk in the power of God that fills you. Amen. And when out there in the world, they say there's a casting down, you open your mouth and you say, Oh no, there is a lifting up because I serve a God who made this whole planet. He owns the cattle on a million Hills. There is nothing that is impossible for him. Watch me work. Watch him work through me. And this, this world needs to see the Lord do some miracles. I want to prophesy this over your life right now. What God is going to do in you and through you is going to be miraculous in the, in the eyes of many people. It's going to defy odds. It's going to be God sized. Amen. So now that we have that clear on tonight, now that I, I know in my spirit that I'm talking to some people that you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you are ready to go into the next level of your destiny because you know, it's your season. You did not come this far to only come this far. No way. Mm -mm. God is not finished. You want to go to the next level. You want to shift into the next dimension of the call of God on your life. Okay. So we need to agree to two things right now. Number one, number one, it's going to be bigger than you think. It's going to be bigger than you think. It will be exceedingly abundantly. Amen. That's why your preparation is so important. That's why your preparation is so important. God cannot open doors for you and usher you into a realm or usher you into an assignment that your character cannot sustain. It's not so much that you can't go through the door, but you need to be able to occupy the territory that God gives you access to. You need to be able to sustain yourself. Amen. In the blessing that the Lord releases to you. So I don't know who this is for, but please. Stop trying to skip steps. Stop trying to access something too soon. Do you know that if you, if you got that blessing, if, if the vision manifested, if your blessing, if your purpose manifested, if this next dimension was made available to you too soon, and you were not ready, it would feel like more of a curse than a blessing. Because your anointing can take you there, but you need the character to sustain you there. Come on now. The mantle that you carry, the mantle that you wear, that can take you there. But you need the spiritual foundation, amen, to sustain you there. So no more trying to skip steps, amen. Now, now there is acceleration to be had in this season. I'm prophesying that. Some of you are going to go so quickly that it's going to blow your mind. Some of you are going to go from waiting on it to walking in it so quickly. It's going to blow your mind. God is going to do a quick work. Amen. God is going to accelerate you. Glory to God. That's why this preparation piece is so key. That's why you being willing and, and ready and enthusiastic to write your vision and then make it plain and then commit to the process of preparation. That's why it's so important. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So ask and it will be given to you. Seek, knock, Matthew 7 and 7, Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call to the Lord. Ask him, God, what is my next move? What, what, is, what is the word, Lord? Is it a yes or is it a no on this vision? Amen. And I prophesy that God is going to confirm some things to you. Glory to God. And I want to encourage you to just even tell the Lord right out, right out loud right now that you will commit to the process of preparing. Romans 12, one and two says that you must be uh, transformed by the renewing of your mind, amen. And that's, that, that is something that um, I know that many of you have already committed to, but it's never gonna end. I came to tell you there are levels to your destiny and it never ever ends, glory to God. The Lord always has more for you. He always has higher for you. Amen. And that's why the latter part of that verse two says that you may uh, approve what is the good, the acceptable and the perfect will of God. Amen. Because there are levels to your purpose. So this preparation is key. Glory to God. Go with me quickly to Proverb 29 and 18. Proverb 29 and 18. Glory to God.
Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, people perish. And that word, their vision, is translated to mean prophetic revelation. That's the literal understanding of that, of that term. This prophetic revelation that you are going to seek and obtain from the Lord is crucial. And I want to tell you something, my friend. When you get your confirmation, I prophesy it's coming quickly. When you get your confirmation, when the Lord nails it down for you, you better, you better be ready. Because you're going to feel like somebody lit a firecracker on the inside of you. And you will not be able to just begin to pursue quickly enough. Amen. And then God is going to hurry up and manifest and accelerate you just as quickly. That's the difference in a prophetic vision. That's, that's the difference that it makes. That's the, the impact that it can have on your life. I'm going to be real transparent with you for a moment. I, I'm very clear on what my next assignment is. Very clear. But I want a confirmation because God showed me two visions, two, amen. I said, all right, Lord, I just want to ask you, which one comes first? I think I know, but I don't want to go in my own wisdom. I don't want to do what's wise in my eyes. And I certainly, watch me, I certainly don't want to do what's easiest for me or what makes sense to me with my own limited understanding because I'm not the creator you are. So I asked the Lord, let me tell you something, you better get ready. Because when you ask the Lord with a sincerity in your heart and a sincerity in your spirit, and he knows that you mean business and you are truly seeking understanding and revelation, I, it came so quickly to me. And I'm saying the next morning, the next morning, the Lord used not one, but two people to come right behind each other and confirm it to me. Amen. Well, you and I know that out of the mouths of two witnesses, things are established. I said, all right, Lord, I've got my confirmation. Here we go. And I began to write my vision and I began to write down the goals and the, 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 the strategy so that now I can put it on the altar. Father, I thank you for the confirmation. I've written down exactly what I know. I heard you say, I'm asking you to bless it. Father. Amen. We'll get there in a moment. Ooh, I feel the anointing on this word. This is a good word. Proverb 3 and 7. Proverb 3 and 7. So we're just going to turn back a few pages. Proverb 3 and 7. Be, here we go. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Be not wise in thine own eyes. This is no time to make moves based on your past experience or even the advice of somebody who might mean very well. They, they may have very good intentions towards you, but they're not God. And they don't know all the details that the Lord knows. They don't know what's coming next for you, no. So you are going to seek the Lord, amen, and just let him order your steps, hallelujah. Mark 4, 18 and 19, Mark 4. Chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. <clears throat> and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. You say, Interesting. How does that apply to what we're talking about? Once again, I'm glad you asked. Tonight we're talking about writing your vision and making it plain. We're talking about clarifying, getting your vision, clarifying, confirming the vision. What are your next moves? What is God speaking to you? And, and now this is showing you why it's important for you to commit what is in your mind, what is in your heart to paper. For you to commit to the process, amen, and even to understand that it doesn't have to make sense to you because God works on a level and at a size that is unnatural to human people. It's bigger than, than we work. It's bigger than we think. And I just want to say this gently. 
it's important that you do this quickly. It's important that you don't tarry. It's important that you commit to write the vision and commit to the, the process of preparation. Because if you don't do this quickly, if you don't commit to doing so, it is a given that the cares of life or life in general will come to try to steal your vision. And that too is a way that the enemy will steal, kill, and destroy. The devil cannot cancel your blessing. The devil cannot remove your, your anointing. The devil cannot cancel your destiny or your assignment. But what he can do is send the cares of life and cause things to happen, cause distractions, try to make delays, send a buffeting spirit, whatever the case may be, to try to get you to abandon it. And I want to uh, pay attention to this one part of the verse here that talks about the deceitfulness of wealth, the deceitfulness of riches. I want to clarify that because we know that God is a blesser. We know that the anointing attracts wealth. It does. We know that God wants us to be lenders and not borrowers. We know that he, he has given us multiple access points to the economy of heaven from tithing to sowing offerings, to sowing alms, uh, multiple access points to the Abrahamic blessing, multiple access points to the economy of heaven, to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But what this is talking about, this is talking about people who have a false sense of security because they are well off financially. Do you know anybody like that? They don't feel like they need Jesus because they're doing good in life. They don't feel like they need the Lord because yeah, everything's pretty good. So it's a deceitful thing. You can't take it with you. It's a temporal thing. And they're trading that for an eternal salvation. So that's what that is speaking of. But what I want to call your attention to now is the fact that we're not going to let the enemy have access to you by sending the cares of life to try to steal the word, try to steal your vision, steal the fire that is igniting in you even on tonight. No, you're gonna write the vision, you're gonna make it plain. You're gonna go before the Lord, you're gonna get your confirmation, you're gonna get your word, and then you're gonna go one step further and you're gonna write that thing down in the name of Jesus, amen. Let's go back and look at Habakkuk 2, one through four. Habakkuk 2, one through four. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say to me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. This is Habakkuk. He said, I'm going to pursue the Lord. I'm going to ask. I'm going to seek. I'm going to knock. Then I'm going to, then I'm going to stay still, and I'm going to wait to see what he says to me. If you go back and if you read chapter, the latter part of chapter 1, say from verses six through 17 of chapter one in Habakkuk, you see that Habakkuk has just put out a series of questions to the Lord. He's wondering some things, specific things. Why is there so much wickedness in the world and you're not doing anything yet? Are you gonna do anything about all this wickedness? Do you see the corruption, Lord? Do you see what they're doing in my nation? I'm calling to you, I wanna know when you're gonna act. So <laughs> then when we get to chapter two, that's what he's saying next. All right, I, I sought the Lord. I did my Matthew 7, 7. I asked, I, I knocked, I sought, amen. I'm seeking. Now I'm going to wait to see what he will say to me. And then in verse 2, and the Lord answered me. Amen. Just like he's going to answer you in the name of Jesus. The Lord answered me and said, write the vision Make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. Pause. Now we're almost done, but listen. For many of you, you've had a similar question in your spirit. Am I right about that? God, are you going to act? Do you see all of the corruption, all of the injustice? Do you see what these wicked people are doing, Lord? Do you, are, this demonic agenda. Are you going to step in? What is my role? How do, where do I fit in this picture? I believe I'm anointed for this generation. I believe I'm anointed for my nation. I know I'm here for such a time as this. How do I fit in? All right, now I'm gonna wait and see what he says to me. Hallelujah. And then the Lord answers and he says, write the vision. What vision? The vision he gave him. Just like you're gonna get a vision. 
Just like he's going to answer you with a specific confirmation. I got mine. I already got my confirmation. Oh, I already know what I'm going to do next. And then he told me in what order. I already got my confirmation. Now you're going to get yours. I already got my vision and I wrote it down. Now you're going to get yours and you're going to write it down. And then the next step after that, that he who writes it may run with it, may run with it. You're not going to go slow. This, this, this creative expression that comes after you seek the Lord and receive from him, then the creative expression of writing it down and making it plain Amen. I don't, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a business, whether it's a ministry, whether it's personal goals that you have for your life, you know, it's time to get your health together. Mm -hmm. You know, it's time to commit to a healthy lifestyle. You know that it's time for you to really begin to develop yourself, that you may utilize the talents and the gifting that God put inside of you. Amen. So whatever it is for you, you better write your vision and make it plain. But understand me very clearly. Hallelujah. It's for the purpose so that you run. So now you run. And it acts as a supernatural accelerant. Hallelujah. It acts like a supernatural lighter fluid, if you will. Amen. And, and then you run with it. So can I prophesy? You're going to run in 2021. If you felt like you were walking in 2020, if you felt like you were harnessed, in 2020 if you felt like many things got delayed in 2020 yeah you know you're in 2021 now but you are still trying to get moving you are still waiting to accelerate you believe that there is an accelerant that can shift you quickly amen this is it this is it this is like a supernatural key hallelujah this is a, a, a supernatural key that you can use to open the door to acceleration in your life that you may run that you may run. You're not going to go slow. You're not going to lumber along. No more delays in the name of Jesus. I curse every buffeting spirit, every demon of, of delay, every buffeting demon that has been assigned to your life. I cancel that assignment in the name of Jesus. I curse that assignment in Jesus name. I uproot those, those assignments out of your life in the name of Jesus. And I prophesy acceleration over you in Jesus name. I prophesy you will run in 2021 no more delays you're going to make up for lost time you're going to make up for lost ground you're going to make up for what you lost you're going to make up for the delays and you're going to run for the remainder of 2021 in Jesus mighty name come on somebody better receive that in the name of Jesus now here's the final thing and then we're going to end on this amen hallelujah mark 11 24 and 25 let's go there quickly Mark 11, and we are almost done. Hallelujah. What a word. Oh, I love this word. Glory to God. I'm looking forward to hearing your praise reports. Mark 11, <coughs> 24 and 25. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah believe that you receive them and you shall have them no doubt get the doubt out i don't want to hear anybody saying well i hope so well we'll see no that's doubt that's doubt whatever you pray for believe if you want to receive there's nothing that is impossible for god hallelujah luke 1 37 so you're going to believe you're going to have faith you're going to stir up your faith you're going to have the god-sized faith amen because you're believing for a god-sized blessing you're believing for god-sized favor you're believing for a god-sized door to open am i right about that so receive that and just stir up your faith and believe in the name of jesus and let's not forget this and when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father, which also is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So you are not going to allow any unforgiveness to block you. You are not going to allow any grudges to block you because that's exactly what it would do. You're going to release. You're going to forgive. Can I just say it like this? Honey, forgive them all. Just forgive them all. Forgive the ones who disappointed you. Forgive the ones who hurt you. Hurt people, hurt people. Amen. And if our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross could say, 
Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. All the more so, my Lord. Let's go ahead and just commit to forgiveness on tonight. Amen. Not that you're okay with it, but you have made up your mind that you're not going to let it block you. If they knew what they were really doing, they would have never done it. But you know that God has already forgiven you for everything. Amen. So all the more so you're going to forgive. You're not going to be blocked. You're going to try your best to love like Jesus loves. And while you are developing into that, you're going to go ahead and forgive. Amen. And then your father who is in heaven is also going to forgive and you're going to believe and receive. Now, I want to hear from you. I want to hear who's writing their vision. I want to hear who's getting ready to run. I want you to contact me and let me know when you start to run. Amen. And make sure you send your praise, your praise reports. And I know there's going to be some people sending prayer requests as well. We look forward to praying over them. But I want to hear your praise reports when you get your confirmation, when the Lord accelerates you. When those doors begin to open, when things begin to come together, I'm just giving them glory in advance. Amen. Well, I love you with the love of Jesus. I pray this blessed you. I pray you receive the prophetic word and you are richly blessed in this season. God bless you. I'll see you next week. In spring of 2011, I made one of the most momentous decisions of my life. I followed the voice of God and the very specific instructions of the Lord and went to a little broken down lake house where I would begin a brand new season of my life. It was a date with destiny. It was there at that lake house that the Lord would speak to me powerfully, give me instruction and revelation for breaking generational curses, uh, engaging in victorious supernatural warfare, even accelerating my preparation for purpose, for love, for marriage. It was a date with destiny. You know, the Lord loves us just that much. He wants us to to grow and to be able to step into everything that he has for us. I believe that many of you are in transition right now. Maybe you are actually in the midst of your own date with destiny and the Lord is wanting to prepare you for breakthrough to access what he's got for you in the next season. Maybe you just need to benefit from the strategy that I learned and that broken period of my life. You see, I learned that there could be purpose and happiness, fulfillment and new joy, even after loss and grief. I would love to get this book into your hands. I believe it's time for you to have your own date with destiny. You can grab your own copy at datewithdestinybook.com or my primary website, jolynwhitaker.org. I would love to send you a copy. Thank you.